My name is Dave Wilhelm. I am an associate professor in the Business Administration Department at Wake Technical Community College in Raleigh, North Carolina. At Wake Tech, we use the Blackboard Course Management System for our curriculum education courses. A couple of the features in Blackboard are weighted columns, which are useful for giving feedback to the students as far as their progress in the course is concerned. This video tries to explain the concepts behind current scores and cumulative scores as I refer to them. It does not get into details of how instructors set those up. Those instructions are covered many places. Here's a screenshot from Blackboard. There are four calculated column types, an average column, minimum maximum column. I've never used either of those. There's a total column which seems to be populated automatically in our courses, which I have found totally useless and confusing. What we are interested in is the weighted columns. There are two weighted column types that I find useful. One is current score and the other is cumulative score. The current score, also called expected score, this is what a student's final score will be if the performance for the rest of the semester is consistent with the performance up to this point in the semester. It includes only items that have grades or attempts. It disregards items without a score. It's termed running total by Blackboard. And this score is going to vary up and down over the semester, depending on the student's performance. The other weighted column type is cumulative score. This includes all items in the calculation and uses a zero value if there is no grade. It's termed not a running total by Blackboard. It starts at zero and monotonically increases. The information on the bottom is just another screenshot in Blackboard that is information to us instructors on whether to click the yes or no box to make it a current score or a cumulative score. I do provide the current score to students fairly shortly after the first exam. Before the first exam, very small changes and very small weighted scores can wave the current score up and down. So it's simply too volatile until after the first exam. Uh, so after the first exam, I, I do provide it to the students. I also like to double and triple check that it's accurate before I publish it so it's not a cause for concern and worry to the students where it shouldn't be. I also do a shadow calculation in Excel offline for two reasons. One is so I understand what the calculation's doing and so that I can explain it to students if they have questions. All items need to be assigned to a category to calculate this current score. For instance, an exam category, homework, quizzes, perhaps discussion board, perhaps connect learn smart, perhaps connect multiple choice quizzes, whichever one of those are included in the course. Within the category, each of those deliverables has equal weight. So all the exams count the same as the other exams, all the homeworks as the other homeworks and so forth. Then assign category weights. Typically exams have a higher category weight than the others, but these are at the choice of the instructor. It is possible to treat individual items rather than as categories, but that's a lot of extra work and somewhat prone to error. So I like to stick to the categories. The current score does include scored items only. If a student does not submit a deliverable, I have to go in and manually assign a zero to those missed deliverables. So there may be a temporary 
slightly inflated value, but not very much and not very long. If no items from a category have been submitted and scored, Blackboard adjusts the score for instance. If 60% of the category weights have scores, Blackboard will divide that value by 0 0.60 to normalize the current score to account for the missing categories. Another way to think of this is that Blackboard divides by 1 minus the category weights that do not have scores. Either way, it's a normalization process that makes sense. Here's a current score diagram and structure. This particular one has exams, homeworks, quizzes, and discussions. There are four exams, each of which has a maximum score of 100%, 10 homeworks, each one graded on a 0 to 10 scale, 10 quizzes where the maximum score is 100%, and six discussions where they're scored on a 0 to 10 basis. The category weightings are exam 60%, homeworks 15%, quizzes 15%, and discussions 10%. Let's look at an example. So partway through the semester, this student has taken two exams scored quite well, a 90 and an 80, submitted four homeworks that have been scored 10, 9, 8, and 7, submitted three quizzes, 80, 70, and 60, and submitted three discussions, scored 10, 9, and 8. Now what? Well, the contribution of each of those four categories is the average divided by the maximum times the category weight. So the exam's contribution, the average score is 85%, the category weight is 60, so that gives us a contribution of 51%. The average homework score is 85% of the maximum times the 15% category weight gives us 12.75%. Similar calculations for the quizzes and discussions adds another 10.5% and 9% contributions. Sum those up. The current score of this student is 83.25%. That passes a sanity check. The average exam score is 85%. Didn't do quite so well on the quizzes, uh, so 83, yeah, that, that sounds about right. Now here's a counterintuitive example. In this case, the student has scored 100% on the exams, less well on homework, quizzes, and discussions. And if we calculate the current score, it turns out to be 68.25%. If the student then scores 85% on the exam, one would expect that the current score is going to increase since the latest score is quite a bit higher than the current score, but that's not the case. Because of the way this is calculated, and it is accurate, it's just if you look at it sequentially, it may be surprising. After we've had the 85% exam score, now the exam's contribution is average exam score of 95% times 60% category weight, or 57%, which is three percentage points less than before. So the new current score will be 65.25%. That's because of the two-step calculation where it looks at the average score of each of those categories. C cumulative score I do not provide to students. It's not really that helpful. It tends to be confusing. It's monotonically increasing. It starts from zero and keeps going up and up until the end of the semester. It is useful for determining the maximum possible score. 
and I'll show that later. All items are assigned to a category, as with the current score, exams, homeworks, quizzes, whatever else, equal weight within the category again, and assign category weights. Once again, it is possible to treat items independent of category, but that's a lot of work and somewhat error prone. It includes all items and they are assigned a zero value until scored. Here's the same diagram and structure, only now we're going to use it for the cumulative score. In this case, four exams at 100% each, and the category score is 60. Now we want to know what's the value of the individual exam. 60% for four exams, 15% contribution of each exam. Homework, 15% over 10 homeworks, 1.5% each. The quizzes, 1.5% each. And the discussions, 1.67% each. If we submit a homework and score 9 out of 10 or 90%, our new cumulative score, starting at zero, will be 90% of 1.5% or 1.35%. We then score 95% on a quiz. We, the cumulative score begins with the 1.35%, adds 95% of 1.5%, and our new cumulative score is 2.775%. We scored 10 out of 10 on a discussion, new cumulative score, 2.775%, plus 100% of 1.67%, so the new cumulative score is 4.445%. We score 85% on an exam, the new cumulative score is the old cumulative score, 4.445%, plus 85% times the 15% individual exam weight, new cumulative score 17.195% and so on and so on and so on till the end of the semester. To use a cumulative score to determine a student's maximum score, it starts out with a pseudo student who receives all maximum scores. If they've been receiving all maximum scores, the remaining credit in the course is 100% minus the pseudo score at this point. So that the student's maximum possible score is the student's cumulative score at this point plus the remaining credit, or the student's cumulative score at this point plus 100% minus the pseudo score. And I do not provide this to students regularly because it would be a lot of work, but I do respond to questions such as, can I pass, can I make an A, and so forth. To ensure that I understand Blackboard's weighted column calculations and be able to explain it, I did a 30-day controlled example on the current and cumulative scores. On the side, I also did an occasional offline calculation as a sanity check. And sure enough, Blackboard's calculations do appear correct. The example ran for 30 simulated days. So there were 30 items, six discussion items, maximum of 10 points each, and together the discussion category contributed 10% of the score. Homeworks, 10 items, maximum score for each homework, 10 points. As a category, they contributed 15%. Quizzes, also 10 items, maximum quiz score of 100%, and the quiz category contributed 15% of the overall score. Exams, four items, maximum exam score is 100%, and the exam's category contributes 60% of the scores. So on day zero, nothing happened. 
On day one, a discussion was submitted. They got a 10, so the current score was 100%. The cumulative score, 1.67%. Day two, a homework, nine points. Current score dropped to 94%. Cumulative score up to 3.02%. So discussion, homework, quiz, then another discussion, homework, quiz, and an exam. And there were basically four sequences very similar to this, though not identical. And here are the results. The current score and cumulative score graphs. These show the 30 days and 30 deliverable results of our example. The upper blue graph is the current score. The lower green graph is a cumulative score. Notice how the upper current score varies a lot initially and toward the end of the example period. It, nothing's changing that much. Whereas the cumulative score graph starts at zero, monotonically increases up to the student's final score. The current score's vertical axis is only 14 points, from 86% to 100%, whereas the cumulative graph vertical axis runs from 0% to 100%. After there's a half dozen or so scores, the current score graph actually changes very little. Big jumps in the cumulative score graph are where we have the exams, since they are relatively highly weighted for the score. You can observe the changes in exam times on the current score graph as well, but keep in mind that the current score vertical axis is seven times as sensitive as the cumulative score vertical axis, so those increases are, are not really relatively as large as they might appear. The complete example data is here, but certainly the graphs are a lot easier to look at. One thing that was encouraging to me is that the final value of the current score is identical to the final value of the cumulative score. If you want to get more detailed, you can pause the video but I think that's enough explanation. That concludes our discussion of the Blackboard Weighted Columns. If you have any questions or comments, send me an email and include the course ID, including the section in the subject line.